Okay, so we're going to discuss today about the science and technology in the world. So this topic will be discussing about the development of the science and technology throughout time. Okay, from the ancient time up to today. Okay, so basically we have here the ancient time is divided here into three stages or prehistoric uh, prehistoric event. So this was then divided here by Christian Georgian St. Thompson. Christian Georgian St. Thompson here um, is a curator, archaeologist, tried to work on the uh, National Museum in Denmark. And basically uh, through his book, the Guide to Scandinavian Antiquity try to describe and try to divide here the prehistoric time into three age or three times or three timeline. Uh, primarily, the division here is based on what is being present as an exhibit in that in the museum where I try to work on. So based on the materials which uh, that exhibit um, substance, this exhibit uh, materials here, that is found on the museum is try to work to try to divide that one so primarily the ancient time is divided into three we have here the stone age we have also here the bronze age and we have also here the iron age so all those na nakikita sa museum niya na made up of stone so let's try to put that one belonging to the stone age and of course this was made up of the bronze so the sub bronze age siya nangyari or na nakita ang ganyang object and eventually if that one is made up of the uh, of the uh, iron so eventually it belongs to the iron age okay so basically we have here your stone age so we speak about the stone age stone age here tried to occur here 2.5 million years ago up to 300 before christ okay so basically this one is being called here as your stone age it's because here all the materials, the tool used by the people uh, living on that civilization is made up of the stone. Okay, so the stone age is actually divided here by into three areas. Okay, so John Lobok here tried to divide the, the stone age into Paleolithic time and we have also here your Neolithic time. But it was then... John Allen Brown here tried to propose that there is a transition period between the Paleolithic time and the Neolithic time. So, so ito si Brown, he tried to introduce here that there is a Mesolithic stage, which is a transition stage or time between your Paleolithic time and we have also here the Neolithic time. Again, the Stone Age is characterized here by the civilization of people wherein they are using stone as their main tool for their livelihood or for their way of living. Okay, so anything that is non-metal, like your stone, like your wood, or even bones as their tool material. Okay, so we have here the Paleolithic time. So again, the Paleolithic time here, or consider here as the old stone age. Okay, so this is characterized here by the civilization where the human try to evolve from the ape-like structure to become here the true homo sapiens okay so for their tools so basically i mean they are regarded here as a hunter gatherer so you can about the hunter gatherer they try to hunt their food so especially for the wild animals in the forest and their gatherer here they try to gather their food like mga wild plants they are not I mean to say they are not cooking their food or meaning to say, I mean, they are not cultivating their food. They are not cultivating their plants. But they just rely on what is present or what's being available in the nature as their food. Okay, for their tools here. So, again, it's made up of the stones. We have also flints, their bones, and antler. Okay, so we describe here their way of living as they tend to live here in small band. So, group by group, small group. And they are more of the nomadic or semi-nomadic. So when we speak about that one, they are not able to settle permanently in one area. So they are more of mobile. They tend to move from one area to another depending on the availability of the food. So pag naubusan na sa isang area, they tend to go to another area. Again, we divide here your Paleolithic time into your lower Paleolithic period, your middle, and we have your upper Paleolithic period. So the lower Paleolithic period here characterized by 
the civilization of the people here is try to utilize a simple tool for their hunting and for their gathering of foods. Okay, it's also tried to describe here a stone chopper. So we speak about stone choppers. So this is just the weapon here coming from the stone. Let's try to chop that one in order for that to have a cutting plate or edge as their tool. It's usually being used here by the civilization of the ancient man, which is the Australopithecus. So this is the ancient civilization here that they tend to inhabit here somewhere in Tanzania. And we have also here the old stone tools utilized by Homo erectus, primarily inhabiting here the African, the Asian, and some European region. Okay, so their tool material can be classified as either core type or your flake type. Okay, the, tor the core type is made here by chipping the stone in order for that to have sharpens and much, okay, even the edge. And you could also have the flake type primarily coming from the stone fragments. Okay, so the next year under the Paleolithic time, we have here your Middle Paleolithic period. So the Middle Paleolithic period here describes the civilization of the uh, ancient man considered here as the Neanderthals. Okay, so still they are using here pudding stones. Aside from that one, they are using already fire for their food. Okay, they're also having that bone implements in the form of the needles in order for them in, uh, they try to do this as well in order for them to, in sewing their clothes, especially covering of their body against environmental temperature. And that one came from the animal furs or skin of the animals. As part of their religious practice here, they are painting their dead ones before their burials. Okay, the next one we have here, the Upper Paleolithic Period, or you call this one as, okay, so the, the last stage of the Paleolithic time or the Old Stone Age. So the Upper Paleolithic Period here characterized by the civilization of the Homo sapiens. We're talking about here your Cro-Magnon man, we have also here the Grimaldi man. So we describe here their civilization primarily by communal hunting. So for example, communal, they tend to form here higher or bigger groups compared with the previous na mga civilization. They tend also to have here extensive fishing, and they also have here already with love with their arts, with this culture and the painting. They're also making ornaments here out of the bones, the horns, or even the ivory. Okay, and they tend to build here the first human dwellings, or you call it was repeat houses. Okay, and their art here is being uh, presented, manifested primarily through the drawings or paintings in the cave walls. The next one, we have your Mesolithic period, or you call it once your Middle Stone Age. Nasa Middle Stone Age pa din tayo. And this is characterized here by a gradual transition of the civilization, the people here from the hunter-gatherer to a more other lifestyle or way of living. So they tend to begin, they learn here to uh, begin fishing here because most of their civilization houses being built near the shores or the river and therefore they tend to learn how to fish. We have also here pottery making, making bow. And we have also here gradual transition into agriculture. So when we speak of agriculture, they learn how to plant already. Okay, this is also characterized here by the, uh, the use of the tool here in the form of the micro leaf. So by knowing micro, so it's made up of small, it's much smaller, much finer na tool compared with your Paleolithic period. Okay, then we have also here the last stage of the Stone Age. We have your Neolithic period or the New Stone Age. So again, this one is characterized here primarily by, so they are more of the agriculture now. They are not just hunting or gathering because, um, I mean, they are already concentrating here much of uh, planting. So in order for them uh, to have their source of their food, and at the same time, they learn also have here to have the domestication of the pets, the domestication of the animals. They tend to raise livestock, maganon, 
and chickens and all, and eventually also they learn also to have domestication of their plants. Okay, another one, they are also involved in pottery making or weaving in the settled villages. But speak about settled villages here, so mean to say they able to settle already here in one area na lang. So rarely they are not moving already because they have already been learned here how to produce their food through agriculture. Unlike on the time na, di ba, your Paleolithic and your Mesolithic were in the are more of, nandun pa rin sa stage ng hunter-gatherer na stage. Okay, the next stage we have here, the Bronze Age stage. So, this is characterized here by the tool of the people here, primarily made up of the bronze. It is the period here where the people learned how to uh, produce here primarily metal or bronze. By the process we call here smelting. So smelting is a process whereby they try to extract okay, metal from the ore. So ano nila extract by smelting and melting and try to pour that one in a mold so they can able to produce here their weapons or tools out of that one. Okay, the first na na discover nila na smelting process here with the smelting of the copper. However, um, the problem with the copper, this one's a bluish white na metal, but this is a very soft na metal. And later on, they learn here how to smelt, okay, the combination of your tin and copper was eventually leading to the production of your bronze. Okay, so it was then discovered here by Sumerians of the Mesopotamia, and your bronze here much harder, malleable compared with our copper. And next, we have here the Iron Age. So this is described here, the civilization of people where they try to use the iron as their main tool. And that's, we're able to make here iron tools out of the iron here because we're able to learn how to perform here the smelting with a higher temperature in order for them to make here or to extract iron. Okay, and this one, civilization here tries to start in North Africa, which tries to spread to Sub-Saharan Desert and all the African region. Okay, then we have also here the Middle Age. So the Middle Age, okay, this is the period between 450 to 1450 AD. So the Middle Age divided here into your Dark Age. Okay, that's between 450 to 1000 AD. And we have also here the High Middle Age, that's uh, 1000 AD to 1450 AD. Okay, so we have here the development of the different uh, civilization here. So first we have China. So in terms of the agriculture, the China here would try to have the farming primarily occurring here near the river like Wanghu. And we have also here the Yangtze River or Jiangxi River. We also hear the flourishing of the cell production, and of course, also hear your iron industry. For the physics, we have here motion. They try to believe here the motion is caused here by a force and stop here by an obstruction. Then we have also here development of the convex and a concave mirror for the virtual and inverted image. For the astronomy, the calendar here is divided into 365 and 140 days. The same through with the circle is also made up of 365 and 1/4. Okay, they also try to catalog here the stars, the planets, the comets, and the eclipses also. It's being cataloged during this civilization. For the science and math, we have here numbers expressed in decimals, and we have also here this, they try to introduce also here the square roots. Okay, for the medical bio, so the diseases here, according to them, is caused here by excess. Heat, we have also cold, your light, your darkness, your wind, and we have also here your rain. Okay, the physician try to prescribe primarily as a form treatment here for their patients in the form of the exercise, in the form of water therapy, and we have wine anesthesia. And of course, Chinese here well known for the acupuncture. For the technology, we have your development of the paper, seismograph for the earthquake, we have water, power, we have also hydraulic uh, engineering works as also part of some of the technology describing here the Chinese civilization. Okay, then we have also here the European civilization. So this is characterized by 
the introduction of the feudal system, which try to divide the society according to your okay, economic status. So they try to describe your people based on their income so or their status in the society. So let's try to divide it one into peasants. We have also here your lord. We have also lay or clerical. We have also the overlord. We have the king and the bishops. And we have your pope and emperor. So ito pinakamababa, ito pataas ng pataas. Ito pinakamataas, pope or the emperor. And of course, here their intellectual and the technological advancements primarily coming from the teachings of the church. Okay, for the education, they try to establish here the okay, cathedral schools, which later on become here, became here the universities. So they try to build that one in areas like Paris, Oxford, Cambridge, and other areas. For the technology, try to use here horse collar primarily to pull the horses as their mode of their transportation. Okay, try, try also to introduce here the use of clock or watch. We have also here magnetic compass, water, water mill, and we have also here the windmill. For the medicine, so superstition here is widespread during this time where they try to believe here about faith, healing. We have also the charms, the magic, the power, mga ganon, supernatural beliefs, and all. And of course, very, uh, very, um, Prevalent during the time was also uh, by examination the urine sample to diagnose the patient. Okay, then we have also here for the Indian civilization. So they try to have your information regarding the diseases, regarding the drugs, and we have also here astronomical bodies. Okay, so they try to divide the year into 12 months, and there are 360 days. Okay, for the medicine, they are more of the natural. They're not believing in the supernatural. And they tend to diagnose based on the signs and symptoms of their patient. Okay, then we have also here the pre-Columbian civilization. So when we speak about the pre-Columbian civilization, here is actually the civilization, be um, civilization before Christopher Columbus. Okay, so this includes here the three ancient civilizations in the Central America, which includes here the Mayan, the Aztec, and we have also here the Incas. The Mayan here try to describe most likely civilization with Central America. In terms of the infrastructure, they try to build here pyramids from the limestone, and their house is also made up of poles and palm leaves. For the economy, they try to use here cocoa beans. Meron siyang monetary value. They can, para siyang money nila. And their astronomy, they try to divide here a year into 365 days. Divided here into 18 months. And each of that would have a 20 days. Aztec is the ancient civilization here, primarily of the Indians of Mexico. So for the infrastructure, they try to build here Okay, temples for their deities. Okay, for their astronomy. So try also to divide here the calendar into 365 days with um, each of that containing here uh, 18 months. And they're also here using decimal notation. Zero is represented by an oval na object. And their number here would have dots and marshang dash as their representation of their numbers. For the Incas, to try to describe here the civilization of Peru. In terms of agriculture, so they are involved in farming made up of rice terraces, fields, so parang rice terraces natin, with canal and irrigation system. They also try to cultivate here avocado and chili, and they're closer coming from llama and alpaca wools. For the astronomy, so they have the same with the uh, Aztec here. So their calendar divided also in 365 days with uh, 18 months. And we have also here using your decimal system of notation. Okay, the next one, we have your scientific revolution. So scientific revolution here primarily a time period where there's a great scientific achievements. So more of scientific uh, knowledge and method that itong ginagamit. So the first one, we have here Universal Model by uh, Nicholas Copernicus. So Universal Model here stated that, okay, our universe 
It's in which the sun is the center of the universe and which all the planets try to revolve around the sun. And based on that, the planets here, based on their uh, distance away from the sun, so we have here your Mercury followed by your Venus. Then you have your Earth, um, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and we have here Pluto for the farthest away from the sun. The second one, we have here the law of the planetary motion by Johannes Kepler. Johannes Kepler. So the law of planetary motion, according to Kepler here, is that the planets try to evolve or revolve around the sun, not in a circular orbit, but in elliptical orbit. And um, according to him, all the planets which are near to the sun, they try to move faster compared with the planets which are farther away from the sun. Then we have the work of motion by Galileo Galilei, which tried to describe here the relationship between your a velocity, the distance, acceleration, and also the law of inertia uh, through your scientific methods. So we have your scientific methods, so just like your scientific methods sa, sa chem natin or sa science natin. So number one, you, first you need to have your problem, you need to define your concepts, followed here by expression of your concepts, then give precise hypothesis for that, then try to test the consequences or try to test here your hypothesis and finally try to arrive with your conclusion and analysis based on the abstract and virtual reality. Okay, then we have also here the law motion by Galileo. We have here the law motion by Isaac Newton. So there are three law of motion here according to Isaac Newton. The first law of motion we have here the law of inertia. Stated here that object at rest will remain at rest and objects at motion will remain in motion unless being acted upon by external force. The second law here, the law of uh, acceleration, so you hear that acceleration the object would eventually be highly dependent on the force exerted to the mass of the object. In the third law here, we have the law of action-reaction. I stated here that in every action, there's a corresponding and equal, unequal, and opposite reaction. And another one we have here, the law of universal gravitation by Isaac Newton. Stated here that objects in the universe try to attract other objects, primarily uh, dependent on the force of the gravitation, which is equal to the product of their masses, or the mass 1 plus or mass 2, the product of that mass, the first object mass of that, and the second object, okay, the product of that, then over here, the square of the distance between their, between their centers. Okay, the next one, we have your industrial revolution. Industrial revolution here marked with advancement in terms of the technology, primarily in terms of the innovation, wherein uh, much of this innovation are eventually uh, machines we try to replace human skills and even the animals. Okay, so we have here for the textile, so we have your, okay, we have your fly shuttle that would have, this is a spinning machine that would have a faster weaving capability compared to the manual procedure or manual machine. Then we have also here road power loom. Okay, primarily, this is a me mechanical weaving machine. Then cotton jeans, we try to separate here the cotton from the seeds of that. So, hindi pa rin tayo mahirapan. Then for the coal, iron, and steel, so this includes the following here. So, coke here for smelting iron. Then we have also here blast furnace, which have a cheaper and faster smelting time. And we have also here your open heart. We're able to have here a finer product, refining steel, so much finer in a steel as a product of that. In terms of the transportation, so we have here your mile long canal. So primarily that one is the Europe device. So we have here canal building of that. Then we have also here your steamboat that can travel here 20 mile distance. Then we have also here macadamizing steel here, primarily for the road. Okay, uh, that would have much durable na road natin. Then puffing billy, 
We're able to pull here eight wagon, call wagon. So, mas mabilis siya with being attached to the, okay, compared with the horses. Then, we have also here steamships that enable us then to travel across the Atlantic Ocean. Okay, then we have also here communication. So, we have your telephone. So, that enable you to have your long-distance communication through our wire and radio signal. Telegraph that would allow you to send message or to receive message through an electrochemical transmission or through your wire without sending it manually. Then we have radios that would allow us also here to communicate as a wireless communication using your electromagnetic waves. Okay, for the lighting, we have your gas lighting here with the use of your gas, burning gas. We have also here Bunsen burner with the use of the gas in the air to produce an intensely hot blue flame. And we have your electric bulb, okay, by Thomas Allison, the use the use of the bulb for lighting. For agriculture, we have your seed drill primarily that would allow you to have even space when you are planting the seeds. And we have also widely accepted agriculture practice would be the livestock breeding.